Hello everybody and welcome back to another unofficial Windows version video and yes we are doing another one of these today because I did get another submission. This one was actually submitted to me at the very beginning of this year by a viewer who sent it to me in a direct message over on Twitter but this one right here is called Windows XP 2014 edition and this as you can probably tell by the name it was released in 2014 it was made by obviously somebody who isn't Microsoft and it is another one of these that just kind of takes a bunch of you know third-party programs some themes and kind of adds it in and uh, gives Windows XP basically a completely different look and feel and in this video we're going to be going through this I'm going to be showing you guys what was changed in this release and um, yeah we're just going to be going and actually checking it out so the only major change on this screen is you can see at the very top left there it says Windows XP 2014 edition setup instead of you know professional edition or home edition like it normally would um, that is really the only thing that was changed on this screen although it, it does skip past the uh, license agreement I guess that so you could say that as well and right here is where you're going to notice things get a little different actually a lot different first of all you have this uh, screen right here where it actually starts to decompress now I've actually seen this before in Hiron's boot CD when you boot into uh, the mini Windows XP mode on that CD um, it kind of does the same thing when you're opening up applications but so yeah what it's doing right now is it's actually decompressing um, a bunch of files because what it does during this installation process is not only does it install all of the standard Windows stuff but it also installs a bunch of third-party programs and you're gonna see that it is a decent amount um, once we actually get to the next phase here so it's got to go through and do this ten times with ten different files and then we will actually move on to the uh, you know somewhat familiar look although it's been changed here you're gonna see how it looks but the actual um, XP installation screen so we'll go ahead and uh, let it finish up here and I'll show you what that looks like alright so it's on this screen right here where you can see things get um, a lot different uh, you can notice that we have a couple of things or actually pretty much everything about this has been completely changed we have a new background we have a new font that is in use we also have a bit of a different design on the left column here everything is still in the same layout it's just basically has a completely different design you can see that uh, we have a, a black um, progress bar um, we have a different logo over here that I, I guess this is made by a person called hacker free HD Windows XP 2014 and he's got his Facebook page right there as well as an email address down there at the bottom and this is it says it's going to take 37 minutes and I'm pretty certain that it's going to take probably close to that because as you're going to see it goes through a lot of um, user prompts this is not a fully automated setup unfortunately like some of the other ones are this one literally for every single program that you install it uh, shows you the installation like it brings the actual window up okay so this right here is kind of what I was talking about where the setup literally just launches into to this mode right here where every single app that's going to install literally comes up with its own setup uh, dialogue basically so the first one here is for 7-zip so we just have to hit install and uh, and hit finish and it as far as I can tell it basically freezes the um, and you know entire setup until you actually go through that app installation at least that's that that's what it seems like to me um, but this is one thing that this person you know or whatever group of people made this because I've, I've seen it done before where they make it completely automated but I guess they just didn't do that or um, didn't have access to a tool that would allow them to do that uh, in this specific version that they made here but you're going to see that it does this for a lot of applications um, and in some cases it will actually launch the application itself like during this you know setup like it, you know Windows isn't even fully installed yet and uh, some of these applications will open up which is kind of funny um, I, I have seen that happen before though this isn't the first time um, but it definitely so this is a perfect example of that right here it launches BitTorrent now BitTorrent I guess was one of the ones that installed in the background but it launches the program and it asks you if you want to make it uh, the default torrent program we're gonna say no but you can see that it literally just launches right over, you know, and like Windows is still being set up here. So we have to actually close out of this and now we'll move on to to the next thing. And right here you can see another program. This is a uh, Daemon Tools Lite and it literally comes up with like the standard, um, you know, installation. Like this is the basic setup that you would get if you would actually download this. So you have to go through, agree to the agreement. There's this thing that reboot required. Like I wonder how, how that would work if you try to like reboot it while this is installed 
installing. I guess that's why it's unchecked. So we're just going to go through and uh, install this here. It's yeah, just basically you know clicking next and setting all, all, all your settings up. Okay, so a couple of things have just happened you might have been able to notice. Number one, this background here got a little bit glitched out because this this new image has appeared which says enjoy using Windows XP 2014 edition R like it's a registered trademark. Um, this came up for Firefox Mozilla. Um, error during execution, Firefox setup 28.exe, the system could not find the file specified, so it tried to run the uh, Mozilla Firefox and, uh, installer. I'm not sure why it says Firefox Mozilla up here. And then Google Chrome launched, uh, and it came up with this dtupdates.com, which is for uh, Daemon tools. So this is like their own website here, and we literally have access to like Chrome here. I mean, so we could literally, I, I wonder if we could um, go to the C drive, go to Windows, and uh, So we can, okay, we're going to keep it, keep anyway. Can we actually run this? I think we can actually run Explorer. This is going to be hilarious if we can actually run this while it's still setting up. And you see that we have another program, Java. So we'll go ahead and hit install here. Now you could probably, if you didn't want any of these programs, you could probably just click the X or the cancel button on, on all these uh, installers and just kind of bypass them. So that is one thing that's kind of nice, um, but it, it would be nicer if it had something like Last XP where it had that list of, all, of like all the programs that you were going to or that it could install for you. So you could kind of go through and actually choose them, you know, choose what you want. We have an error already for uh, .NET Framework 4.0. It says error in line two of configuration data. So we'll just hit OK and hope that it doesn't affect the rest of the installation. All right, and moving on, you can see we have yet another pop-up here. This one is for TeamViewer 9, which, yes, is a bit of an older version of TeamViewer. But this, I'm assuming at least that this came out in 2014. That's why it's called 2014 edition, or I shouldn't say came out. It was released to whatever obscure website that this guy posted this on because this was obviously not anything official not anything mainstream as all of these are i'm sure you guys already know that but let's see if we can actually just to kind of test this here let's see if we can close out of this and we'll see if team viewer installs or not like if it's still doing something in the background or if we just canceled the installation of team viewer so we will see that once we actually boot into it next up is vlc we'll go ahead and just Go through this here i mean this is th this is a pretty boring part of the video i mean i'm probably not going to show you guys all of this here i might speed it up because this is just going to be basically the same thing for every single program uh that we install here hopefully it won't be like an hour of me doing this because it's been on this 13 minutes thing it's been there for more than 13 minutes so i don't know i don't know what to expect it looks like we've kind of frozen up here again uh, I just pressed enter to kind of get out of that here. Now we've launched VLC, so we'll just close out of that. But yeah, this has been on this registering components phase, and it says set up will complete in approximately 13 minutes for definitely longer than 13 minutes now. Uh, so we'll just see what happens. I will, I will come back if anything interesting happens. All right, so right as I stopped the recording, something interesting happened. Uh, we have here an error for error during execution Windows 8 transformation pack. System cannot find the file specified. So it was trying to launch the Windows 8 transformation pack, which is interesting. So we'll hit OK, um, because obviously it wasn't able to do that here. Um, and I guess I could just kind of give this a bit of a disclaimer, as I always do in these videos. I make these videos specifically for the uh, educational value and the entertainment value, sort of the edutainment value that people get out of these. I don't actually recommend downloading these and installing these yourself, especially on your main computer, because we really don't know if there's any viruses or anything like that in here. Um, there could definitely be, you know, some sort of uh, remote access tool or, you know, some spyware. There could be stuff hidden in here that we don't know about because, you know, it's hidden and we can't see it once we boot into it here. So uh, just, you know, keep that in mind. Um, that is just one thing that I always want to really stress is I don't recommend anybody actually using these. Um, so that being said, let's go ahead and just move on here and take a look at Yahoo Messenger. So Yahoo Messenger has failed to start as well, so we'll just hit OK. One thing that I should mention as well is you guys probably noticed that it completely skipped by the username entry, the password entry, the time zone, keyboard layout, all that good stuff. It just completely skipped by it, so there is a bit of automation going on. Okay, so you can see that uh, we have a <laughs> bit of a different uh, 
welcome screen, I believe is what this is. Yeah, it says loading your loading your personal settings right there. So we got this like uh, cool looking like you know background here, Windows XP. This is obviously something fan made, and we have the dude's email address or the group. I don't know if this is an individual person or a group. Hacker Free HD or xd at gmail.com okay so the screen resolution has been changed and oh my gosh there are so many things opening up right now <laughs> this is like this is crazy okay so we've got BitTorrent right here uh, we have Yahoo Messenger this was one of the things I think that it failed like it came up with an error for this so it's still installed you'll notice that the um, start text on the start button has been changed to hacker uh, so far though this isn't really as bloated as some of the other ones, like XP Gold, um, maybe that's because the transformation pack failed to install. There, the, there was that Windows 8 transformation pack that we didn't get. But there's actually not um, a whole lot of programs, at least on the desktop here. We've got uh, CCleaner, Daemon Tools, Lite, uh, Freemake, BitTorrent, Yahoo Messenger, Alien, uh, Guys. I've never actually heard of this program. Oh, this is a theme manager. Okay. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, so you can change, so they have the option in here to change the theme if you want to. Um, oh, this is actually a Stardock program. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I didn't even realize, I, I had a feeling this had something to do with Alienware though. So this was, I, I guess, uh, for Alienware computers, but you could install it on non-Alienware systems, uh, but it was made by Stardock. So that's, that's pretty cool. So yeah, you can change this around. Uh, you know, change your your theme around. So let's go ahead with this uh, dark star. This looks pretty pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and apply that here. So yeah, Alienware. So this is like an Alienware uh, sponsored program, I guess, or it was made exclusively for Alienware uh, systems. So that looks pretty neat. So that is nice that they that they have the themes disabled by default. So you can literally go in here and kind of enable them if you want to so that's definitely very useful they have this very nice like theme switcher in here uh this actually looks pretty nice um so the username is hacker uh this theme specifically like changes the uh all the icons it kind of redesigns like the windows i mean i did a video on window blinds i believe that is what this is kind of yeah theme manager so this was i guess I think, I think it says, yeah, Windows Blinds in here. Based on object desktop technology license from Stardock, including Desktop X, Icon Packager, Theme Manager, and Window Blinds, and Bootskin and Logon Studio technology. So I did a like separate video on Window Blinds and a video on Bootskin and Logon Studio. I should make like a Stardock playlist on this channel because we've taken a look at a decent amount of Stardock software. Um, so yeah, I've got a whole video on a newer version of uh, Window Blinds, which is kind of similar to this. Um, but it definitely does change uh, a lot. That is one thing about these uh, uh, Stardock programs is they're usually very detail oriented. They have, they change a lot of things. Um, so this one changes all the icons, the design of the of, of the windows and the buttons up here. As I was saying, we've got um, all these programs here. We got Chrome, Skype, VLC, and Winamp. Uh, if we go into the all programs, we have um, WinRAR, uh, VLC. Um, we have Rocket Dock in here. That's pretty cool. I'm actually pretty impressed. It doesn't look like we have any pirated software. I believe all of this is free software. We'll go ahead and open up the... Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, I was <laughs> I was not expecting that. We got this guy. I assume this is the author here. And he has like embedded into the, the picture his Facebook. It's like completely cut off though. You've got Facebook.com slash... I guess this is his name here. Um, but you can't read the entire thing because it's, it's uh, like cut off by the image. The image is cut off. And um, this is that updated like uh, system properties window. So we've got, it says Windows XP 2014 edition, Service Pack 3 edition, version 2014. <laughs> okay, so we could maybe simplify that a little bit. Um, the copyright date is claiming to be 2014 Hacker Free Corporation. Probably not a real company. I'm gonna go ahead and just bet that here. Organization Freeware. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not freeware. Um, computer name Workgroup Romania. So I guess the the uh, author lives in Romania. Um, but yeah, everything else. <laughs> you must be logged on as Hacker Free XD to these changes. So you can change like performance here. There's this whole like. 
uh, yeah, this base, this like whole program in here. I'm not sure what program this is, but you can change like, oh, this looks, oh, this is just like standard Windows, I believe. Um, user profile, startup and recovery. This looks a little bit different though. I know Windows XP had like an advanced um, options menu that had, that had some of these things in here where you could change like the, uh, not the like design of the windows, but you could like, I, I like this right here looks looks very familiar where you, where you could adjust for best appearance or adjust for best performance. Um, so that's in here. But yeah, this is just very, this is very a very interesting design in here, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, Rocket Dock up here is fully functional. I'm sure you guys have all seen this program before. So Winver actually looks uh, unchanged um, aside from like the username and the organization, but it still it has the standard XP uh, banner here, version 5.1 Service Pack 3. This is build 2600 uh, with you know Service Pack 3 installed, copyright 2007 Microsoft. So this has all been unchanged in here. But yeah, like I said, all the icons have been changed. And this obviously changes depending on what theme that you choose in here. So like we could go in here and, and like say, hey, let's let's check out this alien morph theme. We could apply this. So yeah, this one right here is again an alienware theme. We've got this uh, nice background here. The start text has returned to normal. Um, this is actually pretty cool that like Alienware did this whole partnership with Stardog. I've actually never like I've actually never seen this before. I've never owned an Alienware laptop. Um, I don't know if they still do this. They probably don't. Uh, but this is this is pretty cool that they did this a little partnership with uh, you know Stardock. But um, yeah, guys, there you have it. I think I've pretty much touched on every major component here. Uh, you know, the icons have been changed, the start menu, everything that you're allowed to do, uh, you know, using this uh, alien um, guys or GUIs program. Um, but yeah, guys, there you go. That is a very brief demonstration of Windows XP 2014 edition. But before we head out of here, I want to give a huge thank you to Wondershare UniConverter for sponsoring today's video. UniConverter is a software tool that allows you to easily convert video files from one format to another. All you have to do is add the videos that you want to convert and specify the target format and resolution. You'll notice that the program displays the file details for both the source video and the format that you're converting to. This makes it extremely easy to compare the file size and video resolution between the source and the target format. But video converting isn't all that this program can do. There's also a built-in video downloader and disk burning tool. The program supports more than 1,000 file formats and is available on both Windows and Mac OS. Check out the link in this video's description to download a free trial today. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And also be sure to drop me a comment down below, letting me know any you know feedback that you guys have, any questions or comments, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And uh, be sure to leave me um, any video suggestions that you guys have, as those definitely help. This video that you're watching right now was actually suggested by one of my viewers, so thank you. And um, as always, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.